<laughs> we have the same thing happening in Washington. It's not always artists, but it's, it's just gentrification. And when people talk about what they're losing through gentrification, very often they'll say it's the barbershop on the corner or the little restaurant that we used to go to every week. And, it, and people feel like, well, there's nothing we can do about that. You know, it's, it's, it's just, it's real estate, it's prices. I've often wondered, why couldn't you have a sort of business preservation policy where people in a community might say, you know, get together and say, these are the three businesses that actually really were places of kind of communion for this neighborhood, and then use tax incentives, tax credits, the other things that we oftentimes use for big businesses to preserve those businesses in some way in the communities mm -hmm. so that you don't just get, you know, Foot Locker and Starbucks and the rest of the thing. But anyway, I'm not supposed for, to For what it's worth, Philip, that when, when we did the rezoning of 125th Street in Harlem in New York, one of the things we did did was a, a series of zoning moves to try and incentivize mm -hmm. cultural businesses and try and prevent ATMs from colonizing. So again, I think people are just trying to figure out this is something they want to do, they should do, and what are the tactics for doing it. In just 30 seconds, and really interesting, I'd love to have this conversation in depth, so if you have time afterwards. But just a really quick thing is if you look at the Tenderloin neighborhood in San Francisco, the Kenneth Raynan Foundation has been the lead funder behind something called the Community Art Stabilization Trust, which is actually doing what you were talking about, Philip, but looking at the nonprofit arts organizations that might get displaced from the neighborhood. So using Phil philanthropic dollars, they're buying buildings in neighborhoods where the property values are about to go up, so they're locking in the low value, selling it back to the nonprofit over a long time, so the nonprofit is both able to remain in place and benefit from having an appreciating asset. So there are a number of people interested in actually getting to solutions, so I'm interested in connecting those people.